welcome, welcome, dear listener, to another episode of the Guitar Nerds Podcast, episode 8, season 5. I'm your host, Joe Brent, and joined this week by Matt Knight. Hello, Mr. Joe. For, Hello, Mr. Matt. For exclusive watches only. Look, Boss Merch, Joe. Boss Merch. You had uh, so much merch. I so did. obviously, dear listener, we're going to be talking about the... Sorry, Jason, the guy who uh, who organises the guitar show, corrected me because you know I always I always moan about the name of the guitar show. He was like, "It's not the guitar show; it's the guitar show." So oh. I've been, you know, that's oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, how yeah. you do it. That's it's right, the yeah, guitar yeah. show. So it was the guitar show in Birmingham. Not in Alabama, in Birmingham in the UK, dear listener. Uh, <laughs> Birmingham, <laughs> Alabama. This, this weekend. So Matt and me went to that. And Matt Matt was obviously working on the boss stand. I was there with JD. You know, we, we all got to check out loads of stuff. And Matt, you brought the most amount of merch for boss. And it was Ooh. all like super nerdy, super cool merchandise. Yeah, so... Um... This, you know, so I guess this weekend I, I was there with with Boss. Um, it's the first one we've done since 2020. Um, really? You did 2020? We did, yeah. Like... So, no, so the guitar show 2020 was February the, I think it was maybe like the last weekend of February. And at that point, people had sort of heard of covid and but also it, no one cared about covid oh. and uh, we had our big stand we had bowls of sweets and hand sanitizer because we were like oh you know safety first um and literally we packed that show down i went to the we packed the show down on the sunday i was in the office on the monday and on i was like hmm things are starting to get a bit strange and i think wednesday i was like better take some stuff home in case i need it and uh, i think thursday was lockdown Wow. <laughs> I, I see you, you're absolutely right it was 2020 i always think of it being like 2018 or 2019 i don't know deep no. deep, deep in the past but 2020 you're right so that was the last one you did and then <laughs> uh, did. Oh, and then you got a bit of a cough there matt i have yeah so that's the last <laughs> one we did um that cough is because of uh talking very loudly for the last uh three, three days. days yeah um we didn't do last year and then we thought, right, we're going to do this year. Um, and we just wanted to, it was our 50th anniversary last year. And we just thought like people need to be branded up. People need to have stuff. People like stuff. So uh, that's what we did. So we had some t-shirts made for, for watchers. You'll be able to see this. Um, yeah, I did. I did get one, but I'm wearing my Frederick Effects T-shirt. Today. Oh, that is cool, though. It's got it's some dogs on it good. with a bit of script, which I can't read. Well, it's the it's the uh, uh, it's the thing that band. Oh, I've forgotten their name. <laughs> Live on the podcast. They're oh, a really famous dear, band. Joe. Oh dear. <laughs> um, but yeah, Sonic we get... Youth. It's a Sonic Youth T-shirt right, okay. redone to now be about know. Frederick Effects. There we now go. we know. Now we know. So. Um, so yeah, so we bought a bunch of merch and we thought it'd be great to brand people up. Uh, yeah, so we did nice rubber wristbands, uh, which people on the YouTube will see. Um, we did t-shirts, we did stickers, and uh, we had a bunch of uh, bunch of pedals there and a good time. We Joe. did have a good time. The stickers were very popular. Even people on the Facebook group were like, uh, I put up a picture of Everyone's you, me, ask for stickers and JD, now, and everyone was like, where can I get these stickers? Um, you should. You should make those stickers available to the general public. I think, you should um, do more merch, Matt. I know. Do you know what? I probably, uh, whether I should say this or not, but there's a company called, which I'm sure most people know, there's a, I know this a company called Redbubble. Uh, and people basically make lots of unofficial bits of merchandise for many popular things. And if you go there and you type in boss... You will see many boss designs, which I cannot uh, actually <laughs> endorse. Uh, and that is absolutely, it is bonkers what people are putting up there. Like no. rip off stickers and stuff like that. And I'm just like, how is this like, how is this possible? <laughs> uh, and some are like genuinely like kind of cool and funky designs. And some of them are like, you've basically done a um screenshot of a logo and then Ooh. just like put it on there as like a 
on a t-shirt so um yeah and i, I can't <laughs> endorse the quality or or the uh officialness <laughs> of anything on uh, on that website but, you, you're uh, starting it, to get things like that not from redbubble because I, I believe redbubble actually you know, largely uh you know do actual stuff but yeah. you get loads of it on like uh, on facebook these days where suddenly i'll be notified that a post that guitar nerds have, has put up has got like a bunch of interaction mm. and it will be that someone with a fake t-shirt account has tagged every single member of like the guitar nerds group uh, on the post and i've yeah. been like get your free of official merch with this link and has screenshot yeah. the uh, the nerds logo yeah, it's annoying. It's very it's annoying. Very but anyway, annoying. apart from that, there was other cool merch, uh, which we'll get. We'll, I'm sure we'll get to. But everyone loves a free T-shirt uh, yeah. or paid for T-shirt. You know, we do like supporting the brands out there. Uh, but um, picks, many picks, oh. many other things. Um, so yeah, so it was a good. It was a very good show. A good start. But we wanted to go there, full brand, uh, make cool stickers, make cool things that people would wear always. Uh, and that was a good start to the good start to show. But yeah, first one we'd done since 2020. And it was very, I would say, I guess I would say this, Joe, about the show. Two things I noticed. It was the busiest I think I ever remember. It was definitely well, the busiest one I've ever been to. Jason said it was 40% up on last yeah. year. And um, it wasn't as loud as previous shows. So for maybe listeners who remember previous shows... Um, or people who have been to a guitar show before, they have a very unique thing at Birmingham, which is looking and listening time and then quiet time. So every 30 minutes, they rotate between those two things. So looking and listening time is volume, and then everything else is headphones. And I tell you what, Joe, the show generally was much quieter this year. Right, yeah. And walking around, I think it's because so many people demo everything through headphones well the thing is in general mm. uh, so i really don't like headphones i actually there are so, lots of things that i won't even bother to demo on headphones fuzz mm. pedals for example mm. i just what's mm. the point i mm. can't tell what's driving but but you're right in the the alternative is demoing through an amplifier and it's just so very very difficult to actually hear anything. You can't really get an idea, certainly not for an effects pedal unless you're wearing headphones, and you certainly can't get an idea for a driver or a fuzz pedal on headphones. So for companies that make fuzz pedals or drive pedals, and we're going to talk about drive pedals was launched at the show. It's very difficult, I think, because it's awkward uh, to have a good sound. But there are lots of great solutions. Obviously, people are getting better at coming up with uh, decent headphone solutions. I saw a lot of the new two notes. Uh, is it mm. Opus? I can't remember what it's called. Yeah. I mean, quite a few people with like katanas, um, mm. as much as uh, you know, I'm on the company clock. But katanas <laughs> through headphones, because a lot of people <laughs> like plugging into amps and then headphones out of amps. Sure. Um, but yeah, also quite a lot of multi effects. I thought quite a lot of people were using multi effects. Um, you know, maybe everyone just needs an IR2, Joe. I don't know, <laughs> but um, I think certainly headphone solutions have become a lot more popular because of shows like this. In a couple of weeks. I'm going, I think we're going to the Stomp Box Deli in, yeah, in, uh, in Hackney. And that, that's all headphones. Like, you're not allowed to take an amplifier. Um, so I think a lot of shows... you bring your own guitar to that one as well. Which is you cool. have got to bring your own guitar. Um, didn't stop about 2,000 people last time bringing their own guitars. Um, <laughs> so I think that's, you know, that's good because it just meant that, I think the last one, I think the feedback that loads of people gave the organisers last time was... It was too loud. Like, right. you basically, yeah. I don't know if you remember, Joe, like 2020, I remember saying to my team that I got the decibel meter out and it, like, peaked at, like, 106, which is basically like being in the middle of a construction site for eight hours a day. Uh, it was, like, unbearable. You couldn't have any conversations. Yeah. Uh, where this time, it felt far more sensible. I feel like they had far trialed it sensible. in the past. I think they were doing, like, 45 minutes on, 15 mm. minutes off. Mm. But they definitely hit the balance right with half an hour on, half an hour off. I mean, I felt sorry for, uh, for example, like, Adrian and Mikey um, round at the Thorpey Effects and uh, Redbeard mm. Effects booth just because they were right next to a company, an Eastern European company called Doro Guitars or something like that. But they basically on the second day constantly had three sort of 
very pirate rocky looking Eastern Europeans shredding painfully <laughs> averagely, painfully <laughs> averagely constantly so as soon as it it was like you couldn't really demo anything on their booth because they obviously worked on the booth but yeah 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 all time they just started soloing badly for <laughs> for averagely not badly but for uh for for the entire time so sort of adrian and mikey were like, yeah i also think up. um uh, <laughs> I did walk past Hello Sailor a few times, and uh, I think they were perhaps blasting out the volume as well. <laughs> they uh, definitely were. <laughs> I was definitely I was at um, Great Eastern Effects trying to have a conversation that was very difficult. Although I didn't mind too much because Hello Sailor, Joe from Hello Sailor, he brought the Gibson Melody Maker that I sold him at. Um, oh, nice! At the London Guitar Show in like 2019. Or- something like that so yeah that, that was, was cool. yeah i think it was 2019 wasn't it yeah yeah there you go um well that's cool but yeah mm. no overall though i would say a very very busy very positive um experience exactly. uh i thought the catering was better this time the little calf yep. was also a thing oh i've just done the you've done a little, just realized up, done yeah. a little reaction there <laughs> that's a thumbs up for the uh catering there um yeah. yes it was better me and jd could eat both being vegans last year was very very difficult because the convention center dear listener is near absolutely nothing because the uh the Birmingham Guitar Show, or The Guitar Show, is no longer in Birmingham. It's in a suburb of Birmingham called Solihull, which is suburbia. And the thing about suburbia, wherever it is, I'm not, you know, having a go at Solihull, all of suburbia is crap. And this was an especially crap bit well, of suburbia. Would, um, so there was nothing around. Um, I would I would say, though, big shout out to uh, Patchouli's Indian restaurant in Solihull Centre, which we went to on Saturday night, Joe. That was very good. Excellent curry with vegan options as well. Excellent curry. So next time you're around, if you want uh, food, shout out to those guys. Definitely not sponsored. I'm pretty sure he is not going to be listening to the Guitar Nerds (laughs) podcast at any point. (laughs) They were very good. I had a very nice meal. We did all get to, you you know, you, me, Matt, and uh, you uh, you and me and JD and all the boss guys got to go out for a nice curry on the Saturday night. We did indeed. Um, But yeah, overall, I thought, They've obviously listened. They made lots of improvements. There was lots of people there. I'm no doubt it's going to be even bigger um, next year. And just the amount of great people. Um, you know, it really solidified to me how many nice people we know and how many yeah. nice people we still need to know. But just so many nice and positive conversations with so many great brands. I, I, I thought, you know, I, I generally just made me feel like there's so many great friendships and i wish there was more way that you could hang out with everyone but it's just like uh, you almost want a day where no one attends and you just get to walk around the booth and hang out with other people that work there Um, as a community driven thing i think the guitar show is very very good it's wonderful getting to see all of our friends who are in other brands mm. and i just think there's a lovely unity between you know all the all the luthiers and amp makers and pedal makers absolutely it's really lovely to get to be a part of Uh, we had a wicked time now on this podcast matt and i are going to try and talk to you dear listener about some of our favorite things that we've checked out i uploaded a bunch of pictures onto the guitar nerds group on facebook and of course you did too dear listener because there were quite a lot of you at the guitar show i got to speak to loads of you which is really nice some briefly some uh more in depth others i got to go out for drinks with so uh it was very very good it was lovely to see so many of you and of course you've all posted your favorite bits there are certain things that are obvious talking points and I think we're going to try and get into those. We're not going Thus to mention all of, all of these because next week me and JD are going to do a podcast um, as well so that we can talk about the things that JD and I saw on the show. But I think, Matt, we've got to start off with what I think was probably the winner of Most Ridiculous Thing that was at the uh, the <laughs> guitar show. And that was won once again for the second year in a row by Fidelity Guitars with the very guitar that I shared on the group a little while ago, dear listener, is the DB Dustin Babich built um, fretless baritone with a sustainer built in. But the sustainer pickup is specially designed by NRG effects um, in order to be able to control each string individually. So you have a switch 
on the bridge where you can switch on and off a sustainer for each string. The idea being you can create a drone note so you don't have to use your right hand for that. You can just, that's going to ring constantly. So you can just fret around, you can just slide around. And then maybe, maybe you do that, say, on the, uh, Maybe you do that on the D string and then you make some uh, nice little triads with the E and the G. Or, or not triads, you know, little two note chords. Make, make the triad with the third note, with the D and the G. And slide. It basically means you can do cool things by mixing strings that you can pick and strings that you can leave just sustaining infinitely. Mm. It was ridiculous. Also, in a, in a custom paint job by, I think it's Missy. Uh, I think is the name of the artist. Um, I will it's check of, for you, Joe. Thank you. All this information is on uh, the Fidelity uh, Instagram, and uh, and yeah, so custom paint job by a, an artist. NRG built in effects, fretless baritone in the DB body shape, which is a single cut, which was conceived for Dustin Babbage on a previous custom build um, that he'd made. It is quite an undertaking of an instrument i think um it's also worth mentioning that uh podcast listener <laughs> which i love and also you podcast know, listener yeah it's uh i just think that's just uh who apparently had not heard of them until they'd listened to this podcast yeah. so um yeah that's the second crazy one i think he's had as well right because the that's other one right. was a also had a feedback pitch controlled trem arm system in, if that's, I remember rightly. That's right, yeah. <laughs> it was a very yeah, some sort of NRG based cool. pitch effect that you controlled via the trem arm. He is Dustin Babich has got some great guitars. He has a lovely um I'm pretty sure he has like a fretless Grez mm. hollow body bass as well. He's basically got great a great collection of weird instruments that he's never ever going to be able to sell. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. And because I'm not on social very much, I've also just clocked on their Instagram. They built a very, very tasteful, sparkly uh, Stella Rosa for Jackson Brooksby. Yes, um, that's right. In well, a sort of a, like cool. a midnight blue. Um, uh, I was like, uh, when I saw this, I was like, because uh, uh, Jackson Brooks, Brooksby, previously of Dip Switch Demos, dear listener, now Jackson Brooksby, you should be, he's been on the podcast, you should be watching his YouTube videos, you should mm, be checking him out on indeed. Instagram. He has a great guitar collection, but whenever I see him playing, he's playing like that heritage that he's got, or mm -hmm. he's playing maybe a Gibson, or sort of recently I've seen him, uh, I think with a Strat, and I'm like, oh, yeah. I didn't even realize he had a fidelity. And I spoke to him and he was like, yeah, it's actually the guitar he gigs with the most. Right, he just okay. doesn't do his YouTube stuff with it the most because it's always, you know, uh, I guess being stored elsewhere maybe to, to, be used, uh, to be used live. But that is a gorgeous, gorgeous guitar. A lovely Stella Rosa with a pair of gold foils. Yeah. Yeah, something, um, something similar to that. I, um... Very cool. Yeah, it was it was great to to talk to Matt. He's not too far away from where I live now, um, so I said, you know, it'd be great to go to the workshop at some point um, and uh, spec out some sort of um, pink sparkly thing. You know, I just I just love just love everything about Fidelity guitars. We've talked about them loads, yeah. Um, and you know, they just make so every time we go, just make such cool instruments. I think one of the ones they had there, which was available, was a just looking at it, it's a st shell pink Stella Rosa light. So that's the kind of one pickup one. Uh, I'm just going to mention that to you if you want one. There's, I think, there's for sale is one of the show pieces. Yeah, shell it pink, was black indeed. scratch plate Stella Rosa. Yeah, it's a yeah, kind of like a really dark tortoiseshell scratch plate, uh, wangy board, maple neck. Uh, Mojo pickups and then a Gold 05 trem with Goto tuners. Um, That's extremely cool. And comes with a Boss gig bag. So, uh... yeah, all <laughs> Fidelity stuff come with a Boss gig bag now. I'd never, do you know the name of the gig bag? CB EG20. Yeah, I'd never seen these. CB EG10. They're amazing gig bags. I, didn't uh, know I use you them all did the time. Them. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're actually great. Like, dear listener, if you've not checked them out, they're really robust, very proper, sort of yeah. mono-esque. Um, I only say that because I, I think mono were the first people to really go, what if we make gig bags Full not on. rubbish? Yeah. And uh, and certainly this, uh, the boss one is very, very good. It looks yeah. great. 
Guitar Nerds is sponsored by Isotope and Native Instruments, two companies who provide the bulk of the recording and editing tools used by Guitar Nerds. If you have a home studio or if you're thinking about getting into demo recording from home, then Isotope and Native Instruments provide the tools that you need to make premium quality recordings with ease and with virtually no equipment other than your guitar and laptop. Isotope make all the voice editing and audio repair tools that I use for the podcast each week and Native Instruments Guitar Rig 7 is one of the best, most comprehensive collections of virtual effects and guitar amplifiers available anywhere. Use discount code NERDS10 on any product in the Isotope and Native Instruments catalogue for 10% off their fantastic range of tools. Although I keep seeing pictures of the Stella Rosa Deluxe and I'm like, oh, imagine like a sparkly pink one of those. So the Stella Rosa Deluxe, dear listener, is the Stella Rosa body shape, which is based on the Stella Japonica, an old catalogue guitar from the 60s. But the Deluxe has three Charlie Christian pickups with large metal surrounds in them. And it has the, uh, um, oh, what's the bridge called? What's the what's the, the trem called? Mastery? By, yeah, Mastery. Thank you. A Mastery trem. Um, it's, it's there's a lot of metal on that guitar. <laughs> mm. Actually, descendant trem. Sorry, descendant, which is the yeah, other yeah. one. That's what yeah. I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, Matt, he just makes such great guitars. Um, and uh, Brian as well, awesome demo guy they had on the stand alongside with Hampstead. It's just Brian so, Love, so cool. who works for Hampstead Amplifiers. Hampstead Amplifiers aren't a company we speak about enough, mainly because mm. they don't really release a lot of new products. Um, but their um, their range of amplifiers is fantastic. I've been thinking recently, uh, well, you know, this year I want to use plugins less and use real stuff more. And because yeah, of my do. amps are, it, yeah, I know I do. And because of my amps are combos, that kind of makes it a little bit tricky. You know, I can't really get an Oxbox or a um, the uh, the Boss one. What's it? What's the Boss one called? The tube amp expander. Tube amp expander. There we go. You know, I can't get one of those for use with a combo, and I don't really own any heads other than the Ignator fifteen tweaker fifteen that's behind <laughs> me on a shelf. God, it's, it's, does Ignator it's, even still exist? I don't know, but also that head. I I think I bought it for like one hundred and fifty quid, and I put it on my shelf as shelf decoration. I've never even plugged it in. I have no idea <laughs> if it works. <laughs> I don't have any cabs. I only have combos. Oh, so, so who knows? But um, but yeah, I was thinking, yeah, maybe I should get a head and something like a tube amp expander and actually be able to, you know, be able to capture pedals a bit better because I think pedals hit power amps and preamps in real gear much better than they do plugins. I spent a lot, yeah. quite a lot of time. As fantastic as the neural DSP uh, Corey Wong and um, Tone King plugin R, which I use for an awful lot of our stuff. Mm. I have to do a lot of tweaking depending on the pedal that I'm running mm. into it because digital stuff just, you know, when you've got an interface there as well, mm. so much of the gain staging is getting confused in all of that. It's, it's tricky. Anyway, my point is I need a head that does everything. You know, the uh, Hampstead Soundworks make pretty awesome stuff like high-end classy british built 20 watt all valve amplifiers classic sounds that kind, of, that kind of thing could be my vibe it could be it could be that and a uh yeah tube amp expander joe and you'll be rocking no more plugins for you sir <laughs> no um, exactly but yeah they, they always team up on the um i don't know if they're near each other um but it's um yeah, you know, those those two brands are always together. Um, but again, great to see Fidelity. Great to see them doing uh, stuff differently. And actually, one thing I would say about all the brands, certainly all the boutique brands, a lot of boutique brands, there, it's just so heartwarming to see so many great small brands succeed and people to be able to make a life and a career from doing this kind of thing. And and you know, guys like Matt just being like, I'm so busy. I'm just like, you know, I think when we first started talking about Fidelity, the wait time was like. He was saying that it was like a few weeks because when you ordered the guitar, that was the only order. And I think his wait time now is somewhere between six and nine months. It's 12 months. His wait wow. time is 12 months. He has wow. 40 guitars to build at the moment, like in, wow. in the catalog. That is, I mean, I've just added a new one to it. So well. maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe I need to, uh, Maybe I need to order one now, and then at least I don't have to pay for it for a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe exactly. that's it. But, but yeah, it. I mean, he's doing so well, and he's doing so well because it's that. It's, it, you know, 
if you like catalog guitars, but you know, because I am forever hovering over the purchase button on a '60s silver tone, mm. and the reason I don't is because I know that it it's not going to work. It's, gonna it's be not going to stay in tune. It is actually going to be when I get over the cool nicheness of that silver tone. Mm. I can't use it for anything. It's not like I play mm. in a, a guitar in a band outside of here. When I play guitar, most of the time it's because I'm making the jingles or the demos, which largely, dear listener, you're going to want to be in tune. So uh, it's, Silvertone's not an option. Fidelity, on the other hand, are offering me all the looks, all the cool classiness of a cattle guitar with all the reliability of a modern one. Um, and they're really, you know, their prices are pretty good. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, that is that is the thing. You know, the starting prices are so good, um, but um, you know, you can make them as expensive as you want. <laughs> as, I, I was surprised as, just as on Dustin the... Babbage clearly does. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you know, you know, but why not? Why not? I mean, again, perhaps not the most resellable of guitars in the future, <laughs> but then that shouldn't be the reason that you buy an instrument oh, just so you can I, sell it in the future. I know, I know. I mean, I like because I think the thing for me is. I like the thrill of a purchase. So I think almost everything I buy is to sell again. Dustin Babbage, that money's gone. You know, that money's gone. <laughs> the, 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 a fretless hollow body Grez with a flame top. Uh, the, Why the, not? You know, the the two fidelities, fidelities he has with built-in effects, one of them a fretless baritone. With flat wound labellas. <laughs> it's, uh, I say why not. But yeah, yeah but sure. um, that's great. You know, again, so good start. Yeah, Fidelity, awesome. Great, great guitar. Now, um, before we go any further, I do want to talk about the fact that we did get to check out, Matt, the audience-built Guitar Nerds guitar from the Vintage yes, Guitars Pro Shop. That was um, pretty cool. That was, it was cool. It along. They brought it along for uh, the idea was that I was going to take it back, but um, you forgot. But no, I didn't forget. <laughs> I didn't forget. I got the train, and they were like, "I was like, oh, cool, yeah, I'll take it back." And they were like, "Great, we'll get the box." I was like, "No, I'm not. I'm not taking, I'm not taking a cardboard box with the guitar on a four-hour journey back to to Brighton." So I, uh, I, I declined. I let them take it back, and I'll sort it out later down the line. Fair enough. But we did get to check it out, and it was fantastic. And all the listeners that were there at the guitar show got to go and check it out. I had people telling me that it was set up really well and played great. I actually just basically, you know, sort of held the guitar for a bit. I didn't really sit and play it because I only got time with it on the during setup on the first day, on the Friday. So I didn't have the ability to sort of plug it in or play it or anything like that. But what did you think, Matt? You got to see it. I did. I you know, I think the main thing for me is it's amazing that you can customize and have a custom guitar out of that factory for like basically no money. <laughs> Just, you know, it, it was so good to see that process from start to finish and then actually see it finished and go, that's a great guitar. And it's a brand that you wouldn't expect to have a custom shop. And this thing has come out amazing. Like, it, you know, I would say perhaps not the same level as a fidelity or things like that that we're, we're talking about because it's not that sure. hands-on it's not that one-on-one but no. very much a kind of I, I don't mean this in a in a in a bad way but very much like your dream parts caster put together by someone in a really professional way delivered to your door it do you know what i mean it's like a better job than you probably certainly i would have done trying to put that thing together um and you can basically have whatever you want so i think that's a real advantage of that vintage pro shop being yeah. able to go you know what i want to dream something perhaps not as crazy as the you know the fidelity baritone <laughs> with inbuilt effects but you want to be able to dream something and make it happen and not spend a bunch of money you know so um for me i think that was that was just a real highlight to see that the process works and it's a great guitar at the end of it yeah, absolutely. The uh, the fellas on the um, the vintage guitars booth because uh, they're they are um, vintage are owned by John Hornby Skewers, a, a British uh, distributor. Dear listener, JHS abbreviated. Obviously, not the JHS. That yeah, not the JHS there. that you might think of. <laughs> exactly, but they're there with them, and they distribute a lot of companies. So they also have like Dan Electro for the UK, for example, and uh, Lava Guitars, Lava Music, uh, mm. those acoustics with built-in effects, and uh, 
a few others. They also had their their Revo or Revo rather, um, uh, which is the new uh, sort of vintage inspired weird. It's almost them vintage doing um, catalog style guitars. So sort of Burns esque pickups, maybe like bound hollow body offsets, things like that. It's almost like Squire's Paranormal series but made by vintage mm. just loads of different weird stuff so they had all of that stuff is there but the fellas that were there were saying that um our, our guitar was one of the most popular on the stand and in fact on the first day i noticed they kind of had it snuck around a corner you'd had to really be on the stand to see it and by the second day they'd put it right on the outside as the main guitar at eye level <laughs> um which is nice which is kind of nice Nice. So people obviously want it, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they're going to send we that to wrong, us Jay. We soon. Yeah, I guess so. They're going to send that to us soon, dear listener, and we're going to do a giveaway. I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to do the giveaway, but um, you, dear listener, all you people who voted, who chose all the specs for that guitar, one of you is going to win that guitar. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll work out how we're going to go about that. But it's... It's excellent, and I kind of wish I hadn't agreed to this second part where I said I'd give it away because I sort of wanted... <laughs> <laughs> That's always the problem. It's always the problem. Uh, um, but no, I thought very cool, and again, it's great to see, um, great to see that process from start to finish, and a really cool guitar at the end of it. Exactly. Now, uh, Matt, I want to talk about some of uh, your favorite things as well. Before we do, before we go into that, I do want to make a little shout out, dear listener. Obviously, we've mentioned um, that we have the Stomp Box exhibit coming up in two weeks in London. Please come to that, dear listener. If you're in the UK and you can get to London, it's going to be fantastic. We're going to be there. We're going to have a great time. And a few weeks after that, um, on the man looks at date uh on saturday the 23rd of march there is the alternative guitar show in kingston in london which is a super micro guitar show with just a handful of great brands including frederick effects including thorpe including fidelity including uh zona guitars um there's there and and you know a, a load of others that's not the only ones that are going to be there it's its first year we're going to be there. I'm very much trying to sort of boost and help out this new show because the way I figure it is the more guitar shows in the UK, the better. We can't do anything on the scale of NAM, So we're doing cool little guitar shows. The alternative guitar show is hopefully, hopefully going to be one of many alternative guitar shows, just really micro shows done at small, cool venues. It's at the Fighting Cox, which is a legendary rock and roll venue in Kingston. Come down. It's free entry. It's well good. Um, Alternative Guitar Show is the name. You can check that out, all one word, on Instagram. Um, or, you know, I'll be posting about it on the Guitar Nerds group. So please do join us for that one. Matt Knight, cool. let's talk about some of the things that you checked out at the show. Yeah, let's um, let's start with Winyard Guitars, which I think we spoke about maybe... We've definitely spoke about them before because I think we saw them at another show. Yes, I, it was actually I met them at the uh, the Birmingham the show. guitar show last year, and I was half cut, and I um of sort course. of uh, I sort of like started to agree to put down a deposit on one at a time where I absolutely didn't have the money to, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I had to sort of back out of that later on. But um, but they make the best relics like 51 54 style p bases esquires telecasters mm. they do their weird stealth casters where they look like esquires but have hidden pickups under the guard oh the relicking is it's yeah, perfect we, they um, are gorgeous we we struck up a conversation because i had a boss t-shirt on and uh, uh the guy was using an emmy uh 80 to demo oh. And I'm going to remember his Classic. name and give him a shout out because uh, I think his name was. Oh, his name was Guy. I was like, this guy, and his name was Guy. <laughs> uh, guy Lewis, chief mechanic at Winyard Guitars. Yeah, I was using a, a, a an ME80, and I was I was selling him basically up to an ME90. <laughs> uh, but one of the one of the guitars that he had on display was his Stealthcaster series um in he had a relic stealth caster in shell pink so basically what this is is a telly with a humbucker in the bridge but it still had a pickup selector on it and a volume and tone so people were going so it's an esquire so it's it's an esquire but actually very much inspired by 
legendary master builder John English, who used to work for Fender way back at the beginning, uh, did something uh, called, I think they were called the Stealth Guitars at that point, which basically had pickups underneath the scratch plate. Hmm. Um, so it looked like an Esquire, but actually had other pickup sounds. The problem was that they were just normal pickups and they weren't really particularly hot or balanced for being under the scratch plate. I see. Um, but those guitars go for like £10,000 now. They're, they're kind of like one of those sort of Fender gems, I guess, because John English was such a sort of legendary builder. He I was didn't the know guy, these think, even existed. Yeah, I think he was the guy that trained John Sir, and then obviously Sir gone on to make Sir guitars. Anyway, so he's made these uh, with bare knuckle pickups and in conjunction with Tim at bare knuckle to make the right pickups for him and his guitar. Very much a kind of classic T style, but yeah, this this kind of stealth thing. So you get a lot more pickup options on it. So right. I tried the uh, the pink one with the humbucker and it was, it was really nice. But then he was like, oh, try this blue one. So they had a stealth caster in Sonic Blue, which had a single pickup, you know, single coil in the bridge. Oh, so still, it's like a proper telly bridge on it, this one. And proper telly bridge. Right. Um so again, looked way more like an Esquire, but had three controls on it and the switch. So basically, you've got effectively two high output neck and middle pickups under the scratch plate. Well, like then single you coils like a strat, then single coils like a strat underneath. Um, cool. And because you had three, it basically meant that you had strat wiring. So you kind of had these four and two positions that were very much kind of sort of twangy strat sounds. You had a very kind of bright sort of country-esque bridge pickup. And then you had a real kind of strat-like net pickup. Really nice sort of chunky neck, rosewood board. I was like, I'm in. Absolutely, I'm in. I think it was one of the best guitars I've played in ages. Uh, you you are it's... echoing exactly what I felt about playing his 51 style mm, precision. Yeah, well, bass. I think he had a 51 there in all black with matching headstock, right, yeah. uh, which I thought was very cool. So I'd have loved to have seen this guitar in pink um, because, you know, got to have another pink guitar, of course. Good prices for what they are as well. Like Absolutely. they hit around think... the two grand to 2,500 mark, which yeah, I think I know the... that's expensive, dear listener, but when, when Fender's. Custom shops are now standardly four grand. Mm. You know that's uh, or about three seven nine nine. I guess now is probably yeah. the average price. For and um, I think what's cool, you know, I was just looking at um, the specs of this this particular blue one, Swamp Ash body, um, quite high output neck and middle pickups, as I said, soft C slash D profiles are quite chunky, uh, maple neck, rosewood fingerboard, graph tech. Um, Nut, so obviously high quality parts, hmm. uh, clues and tuners, brass saddles already. Guitar Nerds is sponsored by Stringjoy Guitar Strings, the world's first true guitar string custom shop. The thing that I love most about Stringjoy is just their attention to detail, their dedication to making their strings the best in the world. And that's a, a labour intensive task that they don't shy away from. Stringjoy are also innovative. They're always looking for new ways to make strings better. As guitar players, we've become so used to all the shortfalls of commercially available strings that we stopped even looking for them to be better, last longer, intonate well, easily. Stringjoy bring all of that to every pack of strings they make, and they're available almost as readily as any other generically made guitar string. Stringjoy strings are available at stringjoy.com and at 400 plus dealers across the globe. If your local store doesn't stock Stringjoy yet, ask them to. And then I just remembered by looking at it, it was volume tone. And then the second one was a blender control. So it allowed you to blend the neck, neck pickup in, in any position. So that kind of Gilmore type thing. And then um, effectively you also get a comprehensive build book. So one thing that you can order is basically a book uh, and it's all the pictures of your guitar being built step by step, which is very cool and comes in a hardback. So you get that with it as well. I think that guitar was yeah two three fifty. So oh, something that's very much sort of right. on my. I would absolutely you know, I would absolutely love. love one of these. I'm sort of 
I think well, it's time for a new guitar, Joe. So at some point this year, Is it's it? going to have yeah. to happen, I think. Well, you haven't made your guitar nerds purchase of 2024 oh, yet. So, uh, I know. There you go. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll need to order something because it will take like nine months to wait and then you just need <laughs> to save up then. Might be fine. Well, it comes out the, co- the company account can weather that sort of thing ah, anyway, these days. Uh, so I, I actually thank you very much, dear listener, because Guitar Nerds is back in the top 10 most listened to hobbies podcasts in Great Britain. Uh, as yes. of this week, which is really nice, uh, really lovely um, to be there. Um, we're up thirty six places, wow, for a month, which is really good. So we've had a big Love influx it. of listeners over the last month, which is That's lovely. Amazing. So thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Um, we're up at number. We we are. 26th in Canada at the moment in the same place, oh. which is up 70 places. Oh, Canada. Which is, uh, which is um, not bad. And 23rd in the US, which is only up two places. We sort of sit around there. In the yeah, US, but 23rd yeah. in the games and hobbies. I mean, you know, think of all the hobbies. I mean, isn't like the number yeah. one, like bass fishing uh, like, it's, sorry, it's in the american one the number one through to number 20 are guns and then like it's fishing after that so we're lucky to to get into yeah, so we're like the most listened to music hobby podcast you know we're just not exactly. really hot. but exactly. maybe we'll get there who knows we'll get but anyway we'll get winyard there. guitars um very much uh very much into that oh and he was an ipswich town supporter obviously i'm from ipswich town i don't support football but well done. Uh, that's two fans now. I'm only joking. I was a big fan, I was a big fan of Ipswich Town when I was a kid. Well, you signed football and everything. You had a signed Ipswich football. Wow, that's that's impressive. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, very very cool. They also had a kind of I can't remember the guy's name now. I'm going to look up. I think it was, was it Chris Robinson. Um, I can't remember what band he plays with, but his signature one, which was a one pick, one humbucker offset with Evertune Bridge, right. um, which is very, very cool. Um, and I've just remembered where we saw these last time, Joe, and we talked about them. Brighton Guitar Show last summer. Yeah, that's that right. The Brighton Guitar Show as well. Yeah, so um, awesome. yeah, that was that was definitely one of my picks. Obviously, if you put a pink guitar on the stand, I'm going to go and look at it. So that's a good way to get me <laughs> over. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, now before we move on to the next thing, I want to talk about maybe some amps and some effects now as well. But before we do that, I want to do our sound sample of the week, dear listener, which ties very nicely into the guitar show. Um, Because one of the companies that released something new at the guitar show were Buzzing Bugs Audio, a company that me and Matt and JD really love we'd had a look at mm. their last releases the bbo1 uh their their fuzz preamp their harmonic percolator that they did of course very recently they did their um their modulation device which was kind of a slap back chorus lo-fi um sort of uh device in you know all, all sort of in in one thing it was uh it was really good that what's that fella that mac Lo-fi guitar player Mac, Mac DeMarco, Mac DeMarco. It was like Mac DeMarco in a box, and that's what the, uh, cool. the BBO three was. But this—that's the last one, man. But this one, the BBO four, they've moved into over. They felt they should have an overdrive, so they've done a transparent overdrive. In fact, dear listener, if you're watching on YouTube, here it is. This is the pedal, the BB04. I understand it's going to be the last in their numbered series, so their pedals have been the BBO1, BBO2, BBO3, and this is the BBO4 full range drive. They refer to it as volume, gain, and tone. Woo! Crazy controls. But also a body uh, switch, which basically adds in a load of low end, which is very, very useful if you want a big full range drive but with it defeated you get kind of a lovely classic mid-pushed drive i just think it's an excellent pedal at what it does what it does is a very simple thing but it does it incredibly well so for the sound sample this week i recorded the demo using very very clean it's just like a di signal i'm using the Corey wong di preset which just sort of gives you a little bit of warmth but it's very very dry and clinical and then i'm using everything from the bbo4 to sort of make the different guitar tones obviously i've added a little reverb and stuff to thicken some of the guitar lines out but all the stuff excluding the bass is done with the bbo4 i think it did a great boxy 
rhythm sound and then like engaging the body switch gave me a really nice thicker lead tone i just kind of felt it did a good job of everything so here's the track uh you can have a listen then matt and i will talk about it afterwards go dear listener that was the buzzing bugs audio bbo4 full range drive joe when did you join feeder <laughs> it sounded <laughs> it exactly is, like feeder it is it is that um uh it when did you buy a cd brand- player joe because i need to know when you bought a cd player player, player. it was it is actually the, it's not even in a different key I was like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, it's because that song is just A and and D, right? With the you know, with the with the little flat in the in the interim, um, and I was playing it, and I was like, oh, this this actually is feeder. I should put in a couple of other chords or something to make it not exactly feeder, but it's pretty close, isn't it? I um I saw feeder when I was fourteen or fifteen at Ipswich Region, and it was fantastic. I mean, when they played that song. <laughs> Man. Oh, well, dream. I mean, Taka Hirosha, the bass player in Feeder, does now own a bass guitar company. I can't remember the name, but he does make bass guitars now. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I, yeah. I, don't, I can't. Rem- I can't remember, but um, but it sounds great. And and hmm. again, we've sort of loved everything that Buzzing Bugs have done thus far. Yeah. Um, and that sounded great. And again, another great demo from Joe Branton, I thought. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. No Just showing you it in context, dear listener, because, of course, I'm not really very good at the old solos and the old fiddling around lead work. So I wanted to show the sort of pedal, how it work, I felt, in a band context. I just think, you know, it's difficult to talk excitedly about, you know, uh, mid, mid-gain mid overdrives, isn't it? Because there are so many out there. But I mm. certainly felt that this sounded naturally brilliant without too much tweaking you know it's just a master tone Mm. control i had it kind of dimed to get it a bit more bitey but i think that's that's the nature of sort of running a drive into plugins to be honest Mm. more than anything else they get they they get a bit thick and swampy um but i thought it sounded great at low gain settings great at higher gain settings which were still quite mid pushed and that body switch just great if you want something full range that gives you loads of low end and like Mm. a big bump in that area but also you know, with it cut, which was kind of my preferred setting, it gave me a lovely, thin-sounding overdrive. I just kind of feel like it's it's hard to push something to go, it's a really great standard overdrive, <laughs> because that sounds bad, but it's a really great, just simple, like, do you want an overdrive but just need it to sound great? Well, mm. That's what that is. Um, really good pedal. Really enjoyed it. Plenty of time for everything Buzzing Bugs do. Nice. Uh, yeah, lovely. Nice. Shall I talk about? Um, shall I talk about some amps, Joe? Why not? Let's talk about some amps because there were some new releases, right, at the show. Yeah. Well, I, I'm. I don't know if I'm. If I'm going to talk about the same brand that you were going to talk about, but um, I went made a point of uh, introducing myself to a few people because I have moved to a different part of the world, as most people who have listened to the podcast for a while know. Uh, and when I say different part of the world, I meant to just a more remote part of England. Uh, <laughs> but to to, um, to the wonderful uh, to the wonderful Norwich. Of which Shocking there are... amount of brands are in and it's, around Norwich. It's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. We've got we've got Marcus Marcus Deluxe. We've got uh, funny little boxes, and we've got yep. Noisy Hammer. So I made a, a, a point of going over to see uh uh ryan and his 
wife whose name I forget, so I'm really sorry. But uh, also, but- uh, the other person at Noisy Hammer is also called Ryan. Not not Ryan's wife, but the other yeah. guy who works at the company yeah, yeah. is also so, called Ryan. Two Ryan. So, um went over and, and introduced myself and they very kindly also offered me a lift home because I was like, no, I've got <laughs> to, uh, you know, because I was like, oh, it's going to be a crap journey from Solihull all the way back to uh, to Norwich. And having now done that journey, because it was also a rail replacement, I really wish I'd taken that van journey. <laughs> it was such a crappy journey on the way home. Three different trains and a bus um Oof, that's across awful. mine was rail replacement as well matt so it's it's, it's yeah okay. I, I could only get... get back to brighton and then get the bus from there but of Ugh. course there's actually a really good pub next to brighton station and i was like oh there's like quarter of an hour i'll go to the pub and then i missed the the bus and so i just stayed in the pub and then my girlfriend had to come to brighton and get ah, brilliant. I love it. pretty upset um, about that anyway sorry Carry but on. yeah no so i went and introduced uh myself to 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 noisy hammer um because I'd seen their stuff on Revo, I didn't realise they were based in Norwich until I'd sort of spoke to Marcus and a, and a few other people. And they just had one of the coolest stands because there was just so much wood everywhere. He was just like, you know, I make cabs and, you know, Zilla make great cabs and they put loads of great Tolex and stuff on, but I just want everything to be like wood. That's a great um, way of uh, of describing the company, dear listener, if you're not aware of what Noisy Hammer do. They essentially started life rehousing cabinets yeah into just gorgeous pieces of well treated wood and uh and and they're expanding into amplifiers now but they yes they they actually la- officially launched the their Juno range of amplifiers mm-hmm. at the show three um, sizes 5 15 and 50 i believe yes i went and, to they did a talk they did a talk as well launching those amps oh, I was at yeah that. you went you went to the talk i was uh, i was too busy um mm. you had loads of free time to look at this in a bit more detail i did um, but the good thing is they live 15 minutes from my house so i'm going to go to the workshop and annoy them there um yeah. but yeah so they, as you said the 5 the 15 the 50 um and also which I thought was the best thing, to be honest, uh, was the Juno Reverb. So they've made a separate reverb tank using a 17-inch spring tank. They're um, amp-top reverb tanks, right? Yes, they are amp-top reverb tanks, but they've built it in a way that has inputs and outputs on the front and the back. So depending on how you want to use it in a studio, in a studio you might want to just plug in on the front and the back, or you might want to have it permanently wired into an amplifier in an effects loop. Um, and I was like, oh, that's funny because I've been looking for a, an amp top reverb for ages and there's not really many out there. Basically, the Fender one, which you can't really get, uh, and the, I think, Benson make one or Milkman make one. Hmm. Can't get them in the UK. So Behringer make one. Yeah, Behringer now make a Euro rack version, which yeah. is, you know, kind of cool. But I think, you know, this was like, oh, this is like a proper hand-wired you know, spring tank reverb. Their amps sounded very cool. It was very much into the 15 um, sort of single channel. I think the 15, if I remember right, the, the 5 is single channel, 15 is twin channel, and then the 50 is the same topology as the 15, but obviously You're right, yeah. Louder. It's uh, yeah. it's just the 15 and 50 are the same, and they've introduced like a push-push Yeah. Um, uh, drive channel basically yeah and if he was saying that he wanted something that was very clean um but he loves the jcm 800 so it had to have that kind of drive but also the immediacy and sort of uh play feel of like a dumbbell as well and yes sort of that's right so all they, those elements they told me that they got a a dumbbell um a jcm and a um a wem a wem that was it. Wem Dominator, uh, the, the maybe? Dominator, thank you. Yeah, they got those three and they basically listened to them and they didn't take, they, they basically listened to the parts of them that they liked, looked at the parts of them they liked and took those. So it's not it's not that it does a, a Marshall sound, a Wem sound, a Dumble sound. It's mm. that they looked at what was great about those amplifiers and then blended them together to make something new and different. Yeah, which is, um, which is very cool. But yeah, I'd not really come across this brand until recently and then it was great to go there and great to know that they're on the doorstep and now i'm just like oh everything they make is wicked (laughs) you know and actually one of the coolest things i thought they had there because they make lots of different cabs and a great um alternative cab option to zilla which we've we've talked about a lot and you know i love i love zilla but i think one of the crazy things they had there joe which i don't know if you noticed was that they had 
made a speaker cab that looked like the Doctor Who TARDIS. Yeah, <laughs> I did see that. And I was like, that is awesome. I mean, it was also great that they bought an N64 with Mario Kart, although I don't think they had much chance to um, to play it. <laughs> no, but, they were um, busy the whole weekend. They were very, very busy the whole weekend. Um, but yeah, it was... Um, it was just it was just great to see it was great to see they've launched amps it's great to know that they are um local and just so many cool custom options definitely worth checking out i want to spend more time with the amp um yeah because i think it sounds really good again joe you know we've already said it it's um <laughs> it's just trying stuff at shows is rubbish um, <laughs> when it's really loud because you just don't really get a feel for it. It's no. not really your environment. Um, so, you know, I think it'd be nice that I can I can go there. And we said maybe about getting them on the podcast at some point. One other thing that they also make, which you have to check out because there's not many people in the UK making this. And we've talked about something similar before, uh, but they also make very cool wooden guitar stands um mm. as well Do which they? look really really I didn't really know they did nice. that. Yeah. yeah um so make a five a you, you like this particular feature it's a five way guitar stand with integrated bottle opener oh. so on one side there's a little bottle opener so you can crack open your beer um and pick up your guitar which is very that's, very cool so very cool i'm into that i can get yeah uh, 290 quid but all handcrafted um proper wood cabinet just looks really sleek i can definitely see me going can you make one of these for my studio <laughs> when, I, when i move in <laughs> yeah. um so yeah no- noisy hammer definitely worth checking out new on the market for amps been making cabs for ages uh, but new on, new on the amp front so definitely go and check them out they also for all you modelers out there they make frfr cabinets um which is very cool. So they make a, you know, especially for Kemper and Helix. I think and the as problem we know, there's a with move F- to go there. Exactly. The, the issue with FRFR stuff is that it all looks pretty rubbish. And there are people out Indeed. there like myself who would love to use gear like Quad Cortex, like Helix, mm. like GT. But, um, you know, I still want an amp behind me that doesn't look rubbish. And as long as everyone's making wedge shaped monitor style things rather than proper amplifier things i'm not going to get into it this company they're very good they're definitely indeed. worth indeed worth looking out definitely worth checking out so um and i think um yeah hopefully we'll see more from them and hear more from them in the future so it was great to go there and great to add um more people local to me that i could now annoy that i um I live in Norwich. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Now, we are coming towards the end of this episode of the Guitar Nerds podcast. Dear listener, Matt and I are obviously going to go on to the Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Guitar Nerds. Dear listener, if you've not checked it out before, there are several tiers that you can join to get extra episodes, extra content each week. Before we do, Matt, I feel like we should try and get in one thing extra each, maybe before... Uh, we go, or maybe just one thing. Let's get in one thing. Uh, one I, more I thing. I can do a quick thing. I think, Joe. I, okay. I think I want to. I want to give a shout out to. Um, I think the best looking stand, right, of everyone. Noisy Hammer, very very close, actually. Noisy Hammer, but were excellent. James's home of tone. Oh, aesthetically, I mean the. James has a fantastic beard. Obviously, I'm very much in the beard game at the moment. He fantastic dresses beard. well. He does. I like his he, glasses. He makes, I like his I like his whole thing. He makes his his wife and his parents, who always end up being the staff, also he he dresses them well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because he basically puts them in the same clothes he's wearing. Yeah, for the whole and show. Um, everything. I just thought the well. best. I just thought the best looking stand. I, I just thought it was great and. Man, like his wiring harness is so well presented. Have you seen, seen that he's doing Jazzmaster wiring harnesses and Jaguar wiring harnesses now? Yeah, setup, which is all with the with all the rollers and everything that you need. Oh, Actually, I, mean, I was I I've, talking about it now has made me realise I forgot to go back to his stand 
and buy some of his merch because he also made some fantastic merch. Yeah, and I, I wanted didn't to buy a t shirt, uh, but it was there was a literal queue at his stand for the entire time. Yeah. Um that we we're there. And I just I only got to speak to him, I think, once on the Friday during setup. I went back to try and talk to him on the Saturday during the show, constant customer footfall, because as you say, the stand looked great. James is home of Tone Dear Listener. If you've not checked them out before, he largely makes sort of accessories. He retails pedals for brands right on straps. Uh, he does the straps that you like, right, Matt? Mother Mary? Mother Mary. Best straps. A uh, yeah. friend, uh, the person I work with, went and bought a very nice pink flowery Mother Mary strap. Absolutely okay. the best. And then I saw he bought one. I was like, probably going to have to buy another one now. They're just, <laughs> they are the best straps, hands right. down. Yeah, yeah. If you've got no morals, then yes, they are the best straps. If you do, then right on are the best straps, dear listener. But, oh, of course. Uh, he does both of them for, for you know, for for each side of the, the war. But, um <laughs> He also does amazing harnesses. He does those pet boxes that are being uh, that are, that are now back in production, yeah, um, which is really cool and are just a great range of pedals. Yeah, very cool. A very, very cool, cool stand indeed. indeed. Very very cool stand. Yes, absolutely. Now, before we go, Matt, I do want to thank all of our Patreon supporters, our top tier Patreon supporters, uh, as we do every week, because without you, dear listeners, Matt and I wouldn't be able to do this all the time and, uh, you know, flamboyantly go to guitar shows. and uh, Yeah, I think as well, I would also say thank you to every podcast listener that came up and said something to either me or Joe over the course of the weekend as well, because um, it's great to meet people that listen to the yeah. pod, realise that actual real people listen to it. Um, and again, you know, they might not be in the industry, as it were, uh, or some of them anyway, but just to be part of the guitar nerds collective it was great to see absolutely. so many people so thanks for everyone that came up and said something at the show as well absolutely completely agree it was lovely um so anyway without further ado thank you very much to nicholas strom rocket rob patterson phil sadler marcus deluxe suresh dorsonic pickups Rob Witherden, Anton Fryant, Barry Gresbick, Steve Davis, John Conway, Yogi the Guitarist, Ty Allen, Kyle Harris, Sean Hughes, Andy Hoffler, Eric Hemmer, Jeffrey Wax, Dan Pilver, Brian Einsler, Dylan Griffiths, Mark Hizal Kadawaki, Eric File, Peter Pesce, Chris Franklin, Andy Manley, Joe Puttick, Blake Wyland, Phil Radomski, Dave Lee, Ross Edwards, Jason Wharton, James Dore, Jake Gray, Derek Rich, Scott Kennedy, Steve Merkel, Abe Matthews, Christopher Loseth, Stephen Burke, Rob, Robin Smith, ooh, Kytopia the Band, Andy McKenzie, Brad Page, Rob Nordvik, Scott O'Brien, and of course, Moog Gravit, whose birthday ooh. it was uh, the other day. Happy birthday, Happy birthday. Happy Moogie birthday, boy. <laughs> Exactly. So, dear listener, Matt and I are going to continue on to Patreon where we're going to talk about more of our favourite things from the guitar show because the list is we've barely touched a quarter of it. Fortunately, next week, me and JD are going to revisit some of the other things because there were just so many great things at this year's guitar show that, dear listener, you need to know about if you love guitars, as you probably do if you listen to an hour of us rambling every week. These are things you need to know about. We're going to head over to Patreon, uh, patreon.com forward slash guitar nerds. Um, we'll see you there for more of this guitar nerdery. Farewell. Goodbye. Goodbye.